Good morning. My name is David Thompson. I'm pastor here at First Lutheran Church of Chickasha. We're excited that you are able to join us on this condensed YouTube Reformation service. Let us begin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we gather to receive our Lord's blessed word, we examine our hearts and lay them bare before him seeking his forgiveness. Do you believe that you are a sinner? Yes, I believe it. I am a sinner. How do you know this? From the Ten Commandments, which I have never kept perfectly. Are you sorry for your sins? Yes, I am sorry that I have sinned against God and neighbor. What have you deserved from God because of your sins? His wrath and displeasure temporal death, and eternal damnation. Do you hope to be saved? Yes, that is my hope. In whom do you trust? In my dear Lord Jesus Christ, who is Christ, the Son of God, true God and man. What has Christ done for you that you trust in him? He died for me and shed his blood for me on the cross for the forgiveness of sins. What motivated Christ to die and make full payment for your sins. His great love for his Father and for me and other sinners. And finally, do you believe that the word of Christ's forgiveness I speak to you is from the Lord himself? Yes, I do. Receive this hope. His love for you revealed by his passion, death, and resurrection. Your sins are all forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you come to Christ, the living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves are made into living stones, being built up as a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Let us pray the collect for the day. Almighty God, gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us from temptations. Defend us against all enemies of your word and bestow on the church your saving peace through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verses 6 and 7. Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. Here ends the first reading. The second reading for this Reformation Sunday is taken from the Epistle to the Romans, chapter 3, verses 19 to 28. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. But now a righteousness from God, apart from law, has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace 
through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement. Through faith in his blood, he did this to demonstrate his justice, because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his justice at the present time, so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Where then is boasting? It is excluded. On what principle? On that of observing the law? No, but on that of faith. For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law. Here ends the epistle reading. The gospel for this Sunday is taken from the gospel of St. John, chapter 8, verses 31 to 36. Glory be to thee, O Lord. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Here ends the gospel. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Reformation Sunday, dear brothers and sisters, is not some remembrance of a cobweb-blanketed religious war victory. It is a recognition of the Holy Spirit's continuous, intensive care work on and for the people of God, who must live in this world of bondage, but are actually free men and women. It's like the ER doctor that comes out to the family and reports, we had to bring him back three times, but he is stable for the moment, and you will be able to see him in a little while. Of course, my dad would have asked that patient, while you were out, did you see anything? Did you talk to anyone? The response most often is, no, just darkness, then something hit me, and I saw the fluorescent lamp come into focus. People were talking to me and asking me questions. That was when I realized they must have restarted my heart. Reformation is about the devil's efforts to take away the believer's life and freedom in Christ but God is faithful to bring them back to the place of the cross from where we start again and again and again. Only after the return of Christ, when the dead shall rise, we receive our glorious bodies, and the parousia begins, will this cycle of starting again transform into eternity. No more error, temptation, illness, sadness, or death. In fact, no more mystery, for we will see things as they are. But for now, Reformation is the celebration of when God started again the heart of the church. I saw a post last week that touched a nerve. It went like this. I can remember the words to a 60s rock and roll song, but not the reason I walked into a room. Have you ever forgot what you were doing? Perhaps striding into a room with a determined purpose. Then all of a sudden, you couldn't remember why you went in there. The causes of this phenomenon may be that our minds bear so many problems to solve that midstream, it lets go of one to consider another, ultimately getting neither solved or the result of age and the shocking decay we observe in ourselves, or those we once held in such high esteem, but now can only pity. Dear friends, this happens to businesses, sports franchises, social clubs, unions, pol politicians, academia, spouses, and, yes, the church. When starting a business, you develop a pithy motto that points right to the heart of what your service is. Sports franchises, give the fans what they want. Unions, represent the well-being of workers. Politicians, they always start out wanting to serve the people. Academia, claims to seek and teach the truth regardless of where it leads. Spouses make vows of mutual and sacrificial love till death parts them. And the church, well, we hear the angel declare, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. You know, over time, the church looks at so many problems of this fallen world that it lets go of sound doctrine midstream to consider more popular ideas that resonate with our sinful nature. In time, the church is teaching the wisdom of man and not the wisdom of God. The children grow up to neither fear God nor acknowledge his glory revealed in the creation. Let me give you just a few examples. There are three views of the Lord's Supper, transubstantiation, representation, and the real presence. The first two rationalize a changing of the elements or an absence of the body and blood of Christ. God's word does not say this. Only one, the Lutheran teaching that God's word says there remains the bread and the wine and that with them God promises his bodily presence also in, with, and under the elements. Though it is a mystery as to how, 
we let stand that God's word is true and every man a liar. Another example is infant baptism, where human reason declares a child cannot decide to believe and be born again until they reach an age of accountability. And so infants do not need baptism. But the Bible does not define an age of accountability unless you have ears to hear David's confession that he was sinful from the moment his mother conceived him. In fact, infant baptism is lovingly given precisely because our epistle declares the whole world is held accountable to God. The whole world excludes no one. And so the promise of forgiveness in baptism is for you and your children. We even see this forgetfulness in our gospel when the Jews declare, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. Yeah, putting aside Pharaoh, Babylon, Assyria, uh, Greek and Roman subjugations, even spiritual bondage cannot be denied with the hundreds of man-made laws and ignoring the year of Jubilee. Today, Confessional and Bible-believing denominations are besieged with pleas to change, to embrace new and popular ideas, and let go of the old doctrines and practices. It is no surprise many look up and wonder, how did we get here, and what is Christianity all about? To get back on track, we need a reference point, and we see it rediscovered in the Reformation. After a thousand years of slowly adding nuances of works righteousness, objects of veneration, it seemed sensible to buy indulgences for freedom from an imaginary purgatory. It seemed sensible to pray to saints rather than God, but none can bring us peace as we face God's judgment. The angel proclaims that only one thing does, the eternal gospel. This good news of Jesus Christ and his finished work of salvation for sinners is the purpose and mission of the church, the body of Christ. It is the starting point we must be returning to, to start again and again. God is immutable. Uh, he does not change like shifting shadows. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we do not need to be looking for something new forgetting where we came from and why we are here, but stand firm, immovable in the Lord. We do not need to add to his word or subtract from his word, but remain in his word. It is when we take our hands off the reins of control and open our hands to receive that we become free from the crushing burdens and problems that face us. Listen, but now our righteousness from God, apart from law, has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. God demands righteousness. God provides that righteousness. God demands sacrifice. God provides the sacrifice. God demands faith. God offers faith as a gift. When you are lost and in a fog, you need a compass and a reference starting point. You have heard of a lodestone. It is what was used to make compasses because it aligns itself with the earth's magnetic north pole. The church has the law, the will of God, that points always to the right way. But as those in the fog of sin, we follow the law alone to our own destruction. And so the eternal gospel gives us the fixed starting point, Jesus Christ crucified for the forgiveness of sin. When you enter a room and forget why and for what, you return to your written list. The church has and will continue to be drawn off course, but the Holy Spirit returns us to the word incarnate, Jesus, from whom alone we can start again. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Psalm 46, 10 and 11. Yes, a mighty fortress is our God. So, why are you here this Reformation Sunday? Are you smelling the brats? 
Is that why you came this particular Sunday? I get it. But when you go back and check the written word, you will realize that the means of grace offered here change our our eternal reality. We go from slave to free, from bad to good in God's eyes, from death to life eternal. Can the few hours extra sleep one day a week provide that to you? Can recreation or getting a honeydew item accomplished Sunday morning offer these divine gifts? God knows we need sleep, fun, and satisfaction. But more important still, he knows we need a reset to home. And as the devil roars and prowls, we need it weekly. Listen to the psalm for today. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Please understand, the city of God is the church, sinners forgiven, saints by grace alone, through faith in Christ alone, by God's word alone. Today, at his feet, Jesus raises us up saying, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Reformation is starting again, free from fear and condemnation. Though you may have times of great pain and forgetfulness, See the light of the eternal gospel and realize God has started your heart. Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray for all the people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord Jesus, you have freed us from the captivity to sin and death from the delusion to, of trying to earn and maintain our own righteousness, and from the chains of condemnation and fear that have many others wondering how their lives got to be so confusing. But we rejoice in your word. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, only your mercy and grace enable us to start again and enable us to know, find, and live in the freedom of your eternal gospel. It is the lodestone, or the fixed compass point, you daily bestow upon your church, so that we stand upon and continue in the truths of the scriptures that point us to Christ, and are the foundation of the Reformation. So enlightened, we proclaim to all the peoples of the world this true reference point, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Lord, you proclaim freedom for the captives and recovery for those with infirmities. Grant your healing in both soul and body to those we name before you, especially Debbie Fritter. Uh, she has uh, rejoiced in your uh, hand of covering and blessing so that the result of her biopsy is that uh, there is no problem there whatsoever. What a relief. We give you thanks for that word of encouragement. Lord, we also ask that you be with Ashley Dutcher, Debbie's daughter-in-law, for uh, that she uh, hold firmly uh, in hope and faith and steadfastness through her afflictions. Lord, we pray for Harold Moley, Bob Walden, both uh, dealing with uh, physical therapy and pain. We ask you to be with uh, Lisa Stoneharker as we rejoice that uh, she has improved and in fact will be discharged on uh, Monday. We pray that uh, Eli Strutton uh, will uh, continue so uh, well responsive in his treatments for leukemia, continue to give him such a great outlook and uh, results. We pray for all caregivers that you strengthen them to carry on and faith to give you 
their burdens. Pray for Karen Collins with osteoarthritis and the homebound, Marcy Clark, Dorothea Thorson, Janelle Goulet, uh, Willie Mae Gherkin, and also Evelyn Lyle Glen Haven Assistant. We pray for Reverend Mark Mosick, who is going through treatments for stage four liver cancer. Rejoicing in your healing touch, grant that all who receive your good news boldly say, if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living word, free us from self-centeredness, manipulative behavior and pride. Turn our focus toward you, first in faith and then toward others in love. Bless all who serve you and others in their homes, in the church, in the workplace, and in our community to rejoice in knowing that if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, grant to those who lead us in this nation and in all the nations wisdom and integrity, that they pursue what is good and right and just according to your eternal gospel, revealed only in your word. Having failed, may they start again in repentance to serve the common good. Deliver us from censorship, deception, cover-up, terror, and threat, and give your peace to the nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We rejoice also in hearing that Frank and Donna have recovered fully from uh, their uh, bout with COVID, uh, even after having been uh, uh, having the vaccine, uh, even though uh, they uh, are still feel tired at times, Lord, you have brought them through, and we thank you for that good news. Now into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. I'd like to share some announcements with you. Uh, we don't have any birthdays uh, th at this time this week, but I wanted to remind you of the live nativity and the sign up on the uh, bulletin board. We need nine or ten or more. Um, really uh, full of the Christmas spirit. You want to volunteer for that. There won't be any animals there, but there will be costumes. And uh, we uh, would like you to be a part of that. It is December the 3rd, 6 to 8.30. And we'll be having and sharing uh, hot chocolate either at bronze or uh, at the gift shop. So please sign up on the main bulletin board. Also, um, uh, we are having a Reformation brought uh, cookout today after the service. And so uh, if you uh, watched this at home for one reason or another, and you do have the opportunity to get out uh, this afternoon, please come and join us. All Saints uh, devotional service uh, is tomorrow at five, but please call me if no one's going to be here. I will uh, I will take that into consideration, but um, we will, it will be very short. It will be um, a, an opportunity to lift up uh, the great clouds of witnesses, not only in throughout history, but also uh, in our own lives in the past, those who have preceded us in death and in the faith. So let me know, give me a call, whether you will be here or not. We... Uh, Hope that you will, in fact, uh, return and uh, join us next week, again, in person, if at all possible. If not, then on uh, one of these YouTube condensed services. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Oh,